Thank you, thank you. Okay, well, welcome everybody on this uh, beautiful afternoon to Stressful Times. I think we are all in stressful times. We are delighted to um, have Paul Figueroa here. He has done many trainings for us in the past for parents um, and in leadership and um, other kinds of topics. He's terrific. And um, so I'm going to let him take it away. We also have this being interpreted on um, another Spanish line. So um, thank you to Maricela, who is doing that. And, um, and take it away. Oh, I will also say that we have a whole bunch of different um, opportunities for staff and parents. Um, so I will type the um, the the link to our webinar page into the chat so that you guys can take a look at that um one of the things that we have coming up next week is called uh learn zoom with katie which is me um <laughs> because um in in our meetups which we do with um staff to talk to each other about how they're handling covid i have heard from a lot of people who are starting up trying to do uh, meetings with kiddos um, on um, on zoom but it's it's challenging and so um, I, I will do a tutorial about how to be a zoom host so um, so that's one of many things and then we also have a, a financial management in times of covid coming up next Friday that I encourage you to attend and or um, invite others and parents to attend so um, Paul take it away Hey, welcome everybody. Stressful time. So what I'm going to do right off the shoot is share my screen for a second and show you guys the whiteboard. Um, there we go. If you're willing, and I think annotation is set, let me make sure, I think we're good. You guys see the text uh, block at the top of the screen there? I'd like you to text in what the biggest stressor right now is for you. So would you guys all do that? Kind of claim your own little space. Does that work? Did you get it okay or no? I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, so are people doing it in the chat? I'm not getting chat. I'm hoping. I don't think they can write on your screen. They can't write on my screen. No. Okay. Well, never mind. In the chat area. <laughs> <laughs> put, put down, what, what's the it was letting what's me write in it. Going on for you right now. I'm going to kind of do a group sense of things. What do we have? Repeat the question, please. Sure. What's the main stressor, the top one, that's going on for you right now? The thing that you're having a hard time with? So I've got, what I'm looking at right now is we've got being cramped. What else? Uncertainty. By the way, spelling errors will occur today. Not knowing, not being in the classroom, so not being in the classroom. Okay. What else do we have here? Worry about families, missing the kids. This is a lot, and I'm glad you're sharing this. Balancing work from home with family. That one's really interesting. We'll talk about that one for sure. I'm noticing a little bit too, a little harder to, to create separation now. We'll call it work-life balance. Juggling life. I'm seeing a lot of uncertainty. Fear, yep, high risk infection. So we got uncertainty, fear, fear of infection. Okay. So, here's what I want to ask you to do. 
me see if share the screen works here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the first sheet of paper in the handout. But actually, before we do that, start thinking about hearing the news. I see that one too. So think about the things that are stressing you and then type in on the chat, if you would, how do you feel? What's happening, happening physically for you? Okay. Let me hear what's happening inside you physically. Like for me, hearing all this stuff going on, my, my chest, my heart gets tight. What happens for you guys? And there's a method to this. Get tired. What else do we have? Tired, exhausted. We're pouring in heartbeat faster. We have heartbeat. Tired. Anxious. Restless. Sick. Calmer. Depression and northwestern arrow and anger. See, this is this is great. Not that this is going on, but that you're identifying it. So I've got uh, getting mad at the news. Okay. Sadness, sleep problems, headaches. So somebody up there said getting. Where did that little guy or gal go? Catch yourself worrying and taking a breath. What I want you guys to get is that's 90% of what we're talking about. Because five minutes ago when you weren't thinking about these things, was your body doing this? Uh-uh. So what's the magic in that? I see Loopy nodding quite a bit. What, is it okay if I un unmute you? Loopy? Okay. I can read lips. I just saw short. So What's the magic in this? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's all mental. A lot of it is. Yeah. So, so one of the keys that you just discovered, and we're doing kind of a mini version of a day training, so buckle up, okay, okay. is you don't know you're stressing out unless you realize you're stressing out. Correct. Okay? And one of the ways that you know you're stressing out is everything that you're seeing, randomly tearing up, body aches, stress eating. Yeah. Okay. So when you realize you're doing that, then like Lupe suggested, I'm going to go ahead and put you back on mute. Okay. Is a nice job is to catch it and then do something different. And we're going to talk about some different things you can do. One of the things that really occurred to me last week, and I'd love to hear responses in the chat. And, and I think Margaret actually mentioned this when we were talking briefly, is there anything we can do about the situation? externally is there anything we can do externally about the shelter in place right now what do you think let me see what you got edith thing says too many messages let me come up down okay in the chat box what is there anything you can really do about it so we've got enjoy the garden, limit social media and the news. We're going to talk about COVID quiet time a little bit later, okay? Um, yeah, there's nothing you can do, right? Enjoy the garden, which is a way to get your mind off it. I did a white paper on job stress a while back, and one of the things that, I, that really came forward for me, and I'll show you up here. And I want you to hear, I'm not minimizing what's happening. I'm trying to give you some skills so it doesn't affect you so much, okay? Making best of the situation, following guidelines, yep. You can't control it. That's the whole thing. So some of you might have seen my little happy face before, right? And all these things out here, the shelter in place, the fear of infection, uncertainty is a big one. dollars. Do you see there how they're outside of the situation here? That's outside of you. So you have actually no control over this. What, what happens when you try to, when you try to take, when you try to take on all of the outer circles there? What happens inside you? What happens to you? When you try to tackle all the uncertainty, 
when you try to figure out all the money stuff. But go ahead and put it in the chat box if you would. You get super stressed. Yeah, you shut down. Right. Takes a toll mentally and physically. Stress, you procrastinate, anxiety. Yeah, you want to curl up in your bed and just kind of sleep it through, right? Yeah. So raise your hand if you kind of get if you get the answer for this. So what am I trying to get across about all this uncertainty? And when we go through it, what happens in your body? So what what's the takeaway so far? What do you think I'm trying to trying to suggest? And you can either chat or raise your hand if you want. Try not to worry about things we can't change. Try not to dwell on what you can't change. Yeah. To understand that it's not, it's beyond our control. Find a turn. Oh, I love that one. We're going to talk about that. Find a time to turn off what's going on around us one day at a time and relax. Yes. So what I'm getting at is the things that were brought up earlier, figure out the triggers and work through them. You bet. When you start feeling overwhelmed, when you start feeling the anxiety and the fear, that, if you will, is in response to letting this fear in, you see? So when we let that in, it affects us. All of a sudden, it, it creates stress and anxiety. And if you will, that's your body's trying to nudge you and say, hey, think about something different. Try doing something different. And again, I want you to say, I'm not saying what's happening isn't happening. It's no. like... Um, Paul, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt. Can you move a little bit your, your screen so I can see where you're... I, I don't see the total picture, uh, the image of your the uh, chart paper. Yeah. If Which you way? can move it. Sure. I don't see... If you can move it a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So what... Oh, where did I lost my train of thought. There it went. So what are some things that, and again, I said it's not about minimizing this, but what are some things that you can do? Basically, what? What can you do about the external stuff there? What do you think? Take care about us. Say that again. Take care about us. Yeah, take care of your house, take care of your place, right? What else can you do? Take hobbies. Say again. Hobbies. Yeah, take care of hobbies. You bet. And you want to spend some time dealing with that, but I noticed myself yesterday, I was kind of getting wound up into a knot because I was thinking about some of the future stuff, about the uncertainty and the dollars. And the truth is, can I do anything right now about it? Actually not. Right? You just do your best to deal with them as you can, and do your best to deal with them as you can, and then keep all the static out, if you will, to the best of your ability. So here's some takeaways before we do this next piece. We're going to start the handout here. What I'm getting at is the first key to dealing with the stressful time is to realize when you're out of whack. And All of these are indications that things are going on that you'd rather not have. And it's also an indication of your brain's kind of taking you over. Okay. This is an out picturing of you letting this in. Now, again, I'm not saying these aren't there. It's more about how do you deal with them and then get back to a center place. Okay. So the good news is once you realize you're out of whack, if you will, or your, your chest is tight or your heart's beating fast, then you can do something with it. So I'm going to show you the, uh, the handout here, and we're going to kind of go through it. I want you to do a little exercise, if you will. So please hold.
って、So can you guys see that on your screen? Are we good? All right. So on a sheet of paper, get out a sheet of paper in front of you. And on the left side, write down a list of things that are not working for you. Write down your list, okay? Right over in this area. So I might say, money. I might say, I'm bored. Somebody else said, a couple people say we're cramped. What was another one? Um, just flat out uncertainty. Meaning, keep wanting to misspell that word. Meaning, when will it end? So write on your piece of paper a good list of different things that are floating through your brain each day, things that aren't working in your life, okay? I'm going to give you about another 30 seconds to figure this part out. And we're going to do the really cool part here. Okay, now I'm gonna take this away because I wanna get back to the chat screen. We're gonna come back to this. One second here. So what happened inside your bodies as you started writing this list? Let's see what you have over in the chat room. The list of what's not working, what started changing? Yep, get anxious, increase sadness, you bet. No motivation, right? Lots of anxiety, start to feel anxious. Okay, if you're feeling anxious right now, take a deep breath, look around the room. I'm giving you something called the reacclimator. I'll show you that in a second. Look around the room and remember what day it is and tell yourself everything is okay, all right? The reacclimator that I just shared with you, and I'll show you on the board here in a second, um, it helps bring you back into the moment. And anxiety typically is fear of the future. Future tripping is what I call it. Okay? So I'll write up on the board here the reacclimator. And you can use this throughout the day, because basically what happens is your brain starts locking onto something, and then you start trying to figure it out. And have you noticed there's like a flat spin involved with it usually? And then the anxiety builds. And that's that's how you tell that something's off. So the reacclimator first thing, take a deep breath. And let it out, please. Second, where and when am I? So I share this a lot with people when we do communication and perception because sometimes outside influences will flash us back to an older time. Um, since I was a cop for 12 years, I was five years out of law enforcement and I was doing a gig in front of about 150 people. And I said the words 1033 
and instantly I was back in the first card game. Trippy. So doing this, taking a deep breath, doing a where and when are you take a deep breath, where and when, you know, I'm in Tacoma and it's Thursday. And then you tell yourself everything is okay. And I'm giving you kind of a crash course with this, but it's a really simple tool and it's very powerful. Okay. The reason you do this is because everything isn't okay started the whole process. Breathing interrupts the process. Doing a worry and when you are, even if you do it right now, you'll be you find yourself more present and tell yourself everything is okay. All right. So now here's what we're gonna do. So some other people chimed in too. You get lots of anxiety, start to feel, feel more stress, sense of loss and grief. Okay. So that's good. Not that you're feeling it, but that you're feeling it. Now here's what we're gonna do. On the right side of the paper, there we go. Wrong thing, please hold. There. Okay, so now on the right side of the paper over here, what I want you to do is take the things on your left and put a positive spin on it. Tell yourself the truth. What I'm basically saying is, there's so much going on right now outside of our control, our brain can get scared and take over our life. And then we end up stressed and anxious and all those things. This is a way of confronting it. When you're triggered, you have these responses we talked about, right? So let's look, what, what's the truth about money? The truth is um, I've been through, well, actually I'm gonna ask you. So what are some, let's see, please hold here, hang on. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to off the screen because I wanna hear what's the truth about money for you guys? The lack of money, what, what's the truth about it? I wanna hear what you think. Type in the chat part over there. Say money is the issue right now. It's not working because of money. The truth is the sense of security, okay? But what's the truth about the stress of money? There it is, we got one from Brenda. Brenda's saying that you've been broke before. Yeah, we've all been through times that have been challenging. So not knowing about if what we need actually more, that's what we think we need, okay? So Cheryl's suggesting that we reevaluate what's important, that we're not alone. Where I'm kind of going with this is I want you to get, the truth is, is that it's temporary, right? Whatever's happening right now is temporary. And I get that it's not fun. And the truth is it's within a six months to a year. Yeah, this too shall pass. Again, not minimizing what's happening, but it's about helping your brain kind of go, it's kind of like, you have your two-year-old kid or three-year-old youngster, right? And they're all scared. And they're scared because they're taking things out of perspective and they don't know. So you're doing the same thing with you. It's like, okay, I got it. We're going to do it a day at a time. There's one thankful I still have a paycheck coming through. Right, right. Here's one for you. Start instead of, see, our brains have this default of trying to figure out what's not working. And what I want you to get to is a place where you can start flipping it to what is working put it in a different perspective. And that's what this right side of the paper is. So take a minute and on everything that you wrote down on the left that isn't working, write down on the right, what's the truth? What do you think the truth is? And notice if you start feeling better. And I gave you a couple minutes for this one. Two minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna be kind of a little a little picky with some words. So 
words have power. There's this thing I talk about in a lot of my leadership trainings about when you say the word, I have a deadline, usually you get stressed out, a little stressed about it. So if you say getting groceries to survive, that can put your body, and we're not going to go too much into this right now, but stuff happens chemically. You go into a fight, fight, or freeze response even a little bit because you're like, I'm surviving. The truth is, and I, and I want to thank, I want to thank her for sharing that. It's, it's more about realizing that that's where our brain wants to go. And that, that can actually unhook all the positive stuff. There we go. My guitar playing is improving. Nice. I'm using time to get more technically, technologically advanced, so to speak. Working on my website. Chilling out. So words have power. So just be mindful of that. When you say survive, it's kind of get a little scary. Okay, another, another 60 seconds. Have some sound effects. Can you guys hear the sound effect? Okay, cool. Hopefully it's not stressful. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this part up. So what in the chat box, let me know what, what did you notice different? What changed just writing the writing the positives instead? Of. Yeah, I'm finding new ways to see my family, absolutely. Well, good. I'll be, I'm right here. I need, I'm going to do something in the background here. You felt better. Good. Mindset's more positive. Thankful. Yeah. And I want you to hear that's something that you did yourself within the span of two minutes and you can do it anytime. I'm going to show you a little, another way of looking at this concept here. What else do we have up? sense of relief. Good. So basically what you're doing is you're confronting the negative thinking or confronting what's happening in the background. Okay. So when you confront stuff in the background, it no longer has the foreground. So let me work with this just a little bit. There we go. See, it's almost as if which, which side do you want to be in? Do you want to be in this side over here, cool and groovy? Or if you pay more attention to it, you'll end up over here with the lion. Right? And if we start focusing on the lion, what happens? Margaret, can I ask you that? And you, anybody can pass anytime, but give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Or how about Cheryl? Thumbs up, we got Margaret, here we go. So. Okay. Yeah, so what happens? You get tensed up and fearful. Yep. And fearful? Mm -hmm. What happens if you focus on the one on the right? The one by, whoop, there we go. What if we focus on this one, what happens? A sigh of relief. Right, is the lion still there? Uh-huh. There's a tricky part, the, li the lion's still there. Yeah. And I want you to hear, it sounds kind of um, easy peasy lemon squeezy, if you will, but you guys just did it. So you have, a, you have an idea now of how it works, mm -hmm. okay? All right, is everybody breathing in and out? You guys good? Yeah, okay. Yep. I'm gonna put you back on mute. Thank you. So let's go back to the handout for a second.
Please hold. Huh. There we go. Wrong thing again. Wait. There we go. So I'll ask you guys if somebody wants to answer this with a thumbs up. You can just show me visually or unmute if you want. What is stress? What do you think stress is? What is it? It's a reaction to something going on in your life. Right. So it's, it's a reaction. And how do we get reactions? Where do the reactions come from? Great point. Our brain. Yeah. And also on past experiences of how we've dealt with, how we've dealt with other stresses, which can be a positive or a negative thing. So when I was in front of all those people and I had that reaction, um, let me turn this off in the background here. Or not. There we go. So when we've had reactions in the past, it sets down a pattern or a baseline of how we go through things. So a lot of us were taught because of circumstances before, if I've got input coming in this way, this is how you respond. And we're also, have you noticed, we're really taught to control everything. That's the way to make things better. Have we noticed that? Yeah. But do you get the, the catch 22? Catch 22 is you can't control all that other stuff. So all it does is create more anxiety. Right? So, what do you think stress is? I'm going to go around and see if I can ask randomly somebody. Let's see. I'm looking for a video to Cheryl. Can I ask you what stress is? How about Elena? May I ask you what stress is? I think it's the, our perceptions, our thinking about that, most of the. Absolutely. It's your thinking or your perception about stuff? Yep. Yes, yes. There's a, there was a saying from somebody it's that not heard, huh? It's not well, necessary that it's, uh, it's real. It's maybe, it's not real. This is what we thinking about that. Right. And the more you think about it, the more real it becomes. Yes. You notice yes. that? Right. So our minds are really powerful. And the reason I wanted to get the visceral experience at the beginning was so you know when your mind's kind of taken over. So when you're feeling all that angst, that's usually your body telling you, hey, your brain's kind of overdoing it. Okay. So when we look back on the rest of it, and thank you, Ellen, I'm gonna put you back down there, cool. So the next question on there, so what happens within us, and we actually did that earlier, we had all of the feelings and stuff. What are the outcomes typically? Typically we lose sleep, Stop eating well. Some of us read books. Common reaction. Kind of the same thing. So when we get back to the why they happen, I'm going to show you up on my board here in a second. Hang on.
So what happens is here's the stress that comes in. Okay, the stress of money, cramps, uh, don't know what's gonna happen. And it comes in a filter. So here comes the information in. And then we have these filters inside of us. And the filters are what's happened in the past and how we've handled stuff. Get out of the way of it. So when I said the word 1033 in the training, it went through my filter, which was, oh my gosh, somebody I work with is getting shot or hurt. So then all of a sudden you have a reaction. Comes in here, goes here, and I react to it. The thing is, oftentimes reactions aren't the best thing that we want, right? The reaction is anger, sadness, fear, and even more stress it becomes a thing. So what I want to ask you is, we'll do this in the chat box. What are some things that you can do when all of those reactions happen? What are things that you can do? Step outside, yeah. Especially if you're in a cramped space. Um, yeah, step outside, go for a walk even. Stop and breathe, ground yourself, nice. Talk to someone. Tell the thought to come in and pass it through. I like that a lot. If, if any of you've tried meditating, that's basically a, a type of meditation, Vipassana. You let the, you let the imagery come through and, and just let it be. Think positive thoughts. Go to your room, okay? If your room's, I go to my room, I get a cramp, but if that works for you, that's cool. It's whatever works with you to bring you peace. Listen to music, absolutely. Absolutely. So basically what I've been saying is all this stuff over here is the stress and the uncertainty. That's the first thing we did. This is what happens with inside us. And the brain, when it's stressed, it hijacks the experience. And if we're not careful, it ends up multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. So the interventions usually are Oh gosh, I'm gonna give out a point. Go for a drive, yes. I tell myself to stop overthinking. Yeah, and how can you, if you're willing, even just take a breath. Yoga's great, yeah. Take a breath, tell yourself everything's gonna be okay. Right? So what are some things that you can do when you intervene? And why would you intervene? So give me your, give me your top one. Go for a drive, what else you got? You've learned one today right out the shoot is you can write down everything your brain's thinking about and then challenge the thinking on the right side of the page so you feel better. Listen to music, yep. Yep. So, tell myself I'm safe, yeah, meditate, yeah. The reacclimator, five points for that one. Nice. Explore and find what works for you. Um, Cooker Bay, at the cat. Talk to your best friend. Yep. You're looking for something that brings you into the here and now. It could be anything that does that. Um, so what's the Thursday? So Tuesday, I started future tripping, thinking about stuff that was happening in the future. And I could tell because I was getting anxious. And, and here's the truth, anxiety, I was getting anxious about stuff that I had no control over. There's a, there's a parable that said, somebody says, if you, if you can fix something, why worry? And if you can't fix something, why worry? I'm going to put up an exclamation point with that. Right? It's like for your brain to go, and I don't mean this so, so it's not about being hard on yourself, but just be gentle with yourself. 
fuck your best friend. Yeah. You're bringing your brain back into the present, into the here and now. So let's go to the next page on the handout. Bear with me here. So we're going to skip down to the bottom line part. So here's my question, and everybody you want to write it on your screen, or if you give me a thumbs up, I'll come to you and ask you. Why do you stress, fret, and worry? Take a step back from the question, meaning, why do you think you do it? Just a little bit of insight. It's a habit, yeah. You let your thoughts take over. I like that sentence because you're realizing that you let it to protect yourself from harm. Yep. So you want things to change? Yeah. So the idea is, is to not try to beat yourself up for these feelings come up or the thoughts that come up, okay? It's more like, like I said earlier, imagine it's a two or three year old with this, these thoughts and these fears. Margaret said she wants to protect others you're responsible for, absolutely. So how would you, how would you behave to a two or three year old? You say, you know, everything's okay, I got this. It'll work out, let's stay in the day. Let's go bake peanut butter cookies because Paul likes them. Yes. The Donna, the fight, flight, or freeze response starts getting triggered. When you really start thinking about stuff that doesn't work, that response dumps cortisol and adrenaline into your system. And then the prefrontal cortex part of your brain stops working as well. And the prefrontal cortex is the part that thinks and reasons. So you go on autopilot. Yep. And I'll, and I'll let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. How you know you're going on autopilot is what's happening in your body. And the way to mitigate the fight, flight, or freeze is to find something that you like to do that chills you out, whatever it is. Um, conscious discipline techniques, cool. Thanks, Julia. Yeah. So on the bottom part of the screen there, We've talked about the fears, and it's interesting. I just thought about them for a second, and I felt the response inside me, okay? And future tripping, what do you think future tripping means? We've kind of talked about it. Future tripping is thinking about things in the future which you have no control over. Pasteurizing hasn't come up so much, but pasteurizing is yep, it's the future. Fear of how will this work out? When's it gonna end? Where am I gonna get my toilet paper from, right? Um, Pasteurizing is when you bring something from the past into you, into your thoughts that make you start worrying more. I haven't heard much of that today, which is fun. Okay. So, If you've had a training with me before, you've seen this next piece, and I'll explain it to you for those that haven't. Show the negative one. So, I talk quite a bit about self esteem. And what I want you to get is. That's a quick treat. There's some apples in it. When things start happening up in your life that you have no control over, what happens is 
is the actually let me make sure something there we go that's better so what happens is here's your tree with the apple things outside you start happening kind of looks like an alien or something here's apples and it starts blowing and the more it starts blowing the more it affects the roots and at the root is your self-esteem i'm going to tell you more about that in a second what challenges can come up is if that if that you're thinking a negative thought it can make all of this looser and it can easily uproot your whole tree. Okay, so here you are self esteem, like I'm important. I'm capable. I belong. That one's really big right now with all the isolation we've got going on. So, when all these external stimulus that happen and your tree starts shaking, get the physical responses and if you're not careful it'll start pulling on the negative one of these if you start thinking i am not important this starts really flopping if you start thinking that i don't belong then all the worry about the money about the uncertainty all the other things over here have a lot more weight okay so what i'm going to ask you is This is full of, and it's not arrogant self-esteem, it's that you're capable, that you matter, that you belong, that you're worthy, that you're smart, okay? When that's solid, the fear doesn't impact us as much, okay? When it's not solid, and what can happen is, you can get all of a sudden all, these, all this stuff and the stress comes up here and it'll pull on something that's not so weak, that's weaker, and it'll start uprooting the whole thing. So I'm going to give you, before we wrap this up, we've got a few minutes left. I'm going to give you one more concept with this. Okay. So what I want you to do pick out your negative belief that's actually adding fuel to the fire, if you will, of what's going on. What's the negative one down here? It's making all this flop worse. And if you're willing, you can share it in the chat room. And I'll speak to it. Because I have some good news. What's the negative belief that might be making things worse for you right now? I'm not enough. Thanks, Lupe. I'm not capable, I think. Yep, I'm not capable from Joanna, okay? Yeah, there's a triple triple header there. I'm not worthy. I don't, I'll never get it. The way it was before, there's a triple header that's really going on. I'm not good enough. Yep. It will never end. Now that's something, what's the, that one's fairly, mm, I want to say simple, but the truth is it will, but your brain starts really thinking it won't, right? It feels like it. I'm not good enough. Sometimes I'm stupid. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a really cool thing on this. I'll show you here in a second. Because once you figure this out, it'll make things easier. And we can't change the environment we're in. We can't change this right now. And truthfully, there's a lot, it just changes the intensity of things. You can't change it, but we can change down here. I'm not important, right? So if you have an I'm not important or an I'm not good enough, when you find out, and I'm not even speak to whatever the fear is, but when something comes up that's stressful, you shake. So I have some good news. I have some good news or some good news. You want to hear the good news first? Yeah, so which good news, the first or the second? The second good news, thanks, Margaret. You guys did. You guys know about um, Geico? I just saved a ton of money on my car insurance because I switched. Teasing. So the good news is, the good news is that this stuff here, the negative beliefs, 
There we go. Well, those negative beliefs there There we go. All those down here that create loose soil, if you will, they're all lies we tell ourselves. And here's the interesting thing. Growing up, we may have learned, I'm going to use that. I'm not important to motivate me to get all this stuff taken care of. Sit with that one for a bit. I use the fear of I'm not capable to overachieve. I use the fear of I'm not enough to do all sorts of things that I wish I didn't, like basically saying yes when you really mean no. You think you're stupid. Something can happen where growing up you learn outside influences start happening, so you try to figure everything out. You go online, you do all this research, or it can be the opposite where you think you're stupid and you just you hide. So the good news is all of those are lies. Here's the other thing. Oftentimes when we have that physiological response from earlier, we get the anxiety or the tightness. The negative belief, these guys here, the negative beliefs are adding fuel to the fire. Now here's the good news. Since they're all lies, the idea is once you find, so for Angelo, you said you're not good enough. The truth is you are good enough. So in the moment when you feel things starting to overwhelm you, loop that in your head. Tell yourself you are. Years ago, I, uh, I think most of you know I've been on national TV, done all this stuff, right? I, I speak for a living. I got stage fright in Spokane. And before I knew it, I was starting to sweat and I was feeling anxious and all this stuff. And this is the short version. What I realized was I was thinking I wasn't good enough and that was fueling everything. So for about three to five minutes, I looped in, I'm good enough, and it chilled out everything. It's amazing. So here's the thing. Takeaways before we close this up, because we only have two minutes left. So the takeaways are we get outside stimulus coming in, and then based upon our past, or our pattern from doing it before we have a reaction, how we're gonna deal with the stress, okay? And this is a pattern that's been set down before. We've done it for years or it's just worked or hasn't worked, okay? The idea is if your self-esteem is low, it's gonna make the triggers even harsher. So when you notice you're out of whack, do something, one, to interrupt it. Do a reacclimator. Take a deep breath. Everything's okay. Do a get back into the moment exercise, whatever works for you. And then if you really want to get after it, ask yourself what negative belief you're believing. There's a, there's a short version to this, which is memorize all of those positive beliefs. There's only like 10 of them. And when you notice you're out of whack, you can ask yourself just quickly in your head, what's, what's going on? Why am I reacting like this? And then loop the truth. This is happening because I think I'm not important. There's 3 billion people on unemployment. And I'm, you know, I'm not important. I'm, what's the truth? I am important. And then you'll notice you'll settle in and solutions and your next step will show up. Okay? So we got time for a burning question or two over in the chat space. Thank you everybody for coming. Superhero pose is good. Yeah, if it works, you bet. Fight on it. Okay, Jody, um, either give me your email or I'll figure out how to do that to send you the reacclimator. You got it. You're welcome, Margaret. Wonderful. Thanks so very much. Glad to hear it. So take care. Be well. I'll see you next time. Thank you, Bye. everybody. Thanks for coming. Bye.
All right. I look like Gallagher right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to close this down. Hmm. Okay. Bye, Paul. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>